Hello, this is the Radio Geek, and today for you I have a little mini review of a uh, pocket multimeter. This is, uh, I guess, the Autotool A U T O O L digital multimeter. It's actually, I believe, the same as the uh, the Victor um, VC921. Uh, plastic case it comes in has a little uh, lanyard and the uh, uh, manual in there as well it's a it's a hard shell plastic case and it runs on a couple of um, AA batteries which I've already installed and it's just uh, kind of a clamshell here you just kind of separate it there and then you can just Flip it back, and if you had the lanyard on there, you can string it from the front um, through this little hole here, and it would kind of act as a stand. Although it's probably going to be used like this most of the time, I would think. Um, it also, when the lid closes, if you have it in the off position, when the lid closes, this hole lines up with the off switch, so you know that it's off when you put it away. Um, however, Oddly enough, it does have two um, two off positions. So it's got an off position here and over here. If you have it in this off position, it um, it won't close the lid. So only has to, it has to be over here for the lid to close. Um, you've probably seen this uh, around. It's quite a popular little pocket meter. It's uh, yeah, it's not too bad. The the build of it and all. Uh, Considering what it cost, I, I got this on um, Amazon. I think it was about $14. Uh, I think if you shop around on um, uh, maybe eBay or something, you might get a little cheaper. You might get it for around $10 or $11. Um, like I say, I think this is the same one as the as the Victor. Um, I think it's a, a VC921, uh, I think. Um, we'll go through a few of the functions here on this multimeter. Um, its probes are stored inside and there's a little uh, lever here that when you pull it back it kind of pushes the probes out and then you can just grab them and uh, pull them, extend them out. They're, oh I don't know, they're not too terribly long, maybe a foot and a half or so. Um, you have a dedicated um, switch selection for um, uh, AC voltage and DC voltage ohms, diode check, continuity, capacitance, and then it has a, um, I don't know why they made this red, it's harder to read, but it's um, frequency and a duty cycle. And up here it says um, Hertz duty cycle up here underneath the uh, rel function. Well, we'll get to this rel function later on because even though it's silk screened on here, I looked in the manual, there's no mention of a rel function and it doesn't seem that it does the rel function, it just does the whole function which is in yellow. So I don't know if they have multiple models of these and um, <laughs> they just silk screen them all the same, I don't know, but there is no rel function as near as I can tell on this multimeter. Um, so we'll start out and uh, we'll start out with the uh, the ohms range it's in auto range right now and I don't know if I can zoom in here on this or not we'll try let me scoot it over okay so right now it's in auto and if you hit the range button here it will go into the different ranges that it has. You can see on the right side it went from ohms to kilo ohms and the decimal point moves around and then it goes to mega ohms. And I think if you just hold it in it goes back to auto again. So I have a, uh, a um, kind of a resistor substitution box over here kind of off camera so I'm going to just hook a couple of test leads up to it and switch that around and 
it's it's pretty close on all my other meters what the uh, substitution box says so hopefully we'll get something very very close to it if I can get the uh, clips to uh, stay on the probes here anyway mm. might have to hold that one okay let's see got uh, 100 ohms 200 300 400 500 600 700 800 900 1000 okay let's see 2000 3000 4000 I'm sorry this is 3000 no no it's 4 it's 3000 plus 1000 sorry um, 5000 6000 7 oops 8 9 10k and put this on 300 and put 300 and 3k is 3300 3 point two nine three K so that's pretty good so yeah the ohms uh, seems to be uh, pretty good um, it has a, a, a diode mode here too and uh, you can check um, uh, a regular regular diode with it as well as LEDs I've got uh, a diode here just just off camera shot here okay there's the drop across the diode and of course the other way you don't get anything um, it does uh, it does light up LEDs as well and gives the um, the voltage drop of the uh, of the LEDs too let me actually back this up a little bit and you can see the LEDs oops wrong way okay I don't know if you're gonna be able to see them light up or not but we'll We'll try. Yeah, the green one's lit up and it gives you the uh, voltage drop 1.8 and the yellow one. Oh yeah you can see that one. 1.85 on that one. Red one that's uh, 1.6 almost 1.7 and a white one. They're two and a half almost 2.6 volts. So that's pretty impressive that with the pocket uh, multimeter you can light a white LED that that's um, pretty pretty impressive I think um, let's see we have the continuity uh, next let's see what this is like here it's, it's not too bad Probably I don't know a couple times a second. Seems seems like it latches. It's not it's not scratchy and it's pretty loud. So that's nice. It's loud enough if you're in a somewhat noisy environment you can still hear it. And it's not that scratchy, nasty sounding uh, buzzer that that are in a lot of uh, uh, inexpensive multimeters. Um, go ahead and we'll check what capacitors we have here. Let's see, we have, um, I think this is a thousand picofarad capacitor, this first one. There you go, 0.957 nanofarads, and then a 0 0.068 microfarad. Um, 69.45 nanofarad, and then a 470 microfarad. Get it on there. Four hundred seventy three, four hundred seventy point six. So it took a little while for that big one, but uh, other than that, it was uh, seemed to be pretty pretty quick. Um, let's see. I've got uh, something I can I guess check the frequency of here. I've got a little. Um, frequency generator here that's off camera that's at two uh, two kilohertz 
and you can see we have 1.999 kilohertz so that seems uh, to be working um, I guess if I hit this button it will give me the duty cycle yeah it does 49.2 and it's 50 percent duty cycle so yeah that's close enough I guess um, so that seemed to work um, I would think that uh, on the resistance range anyway I should be able to get to that rel function to operate when it kind of floats around but if I hit it it just goes into the hold position. Maybe it maybe it only works on the voltage range or something. Nope. Just does the hold function. And if I hold it in, does it do something there? I don't see any kind of a rel symbol coming up. Let me uh, let me get some kind of a voltage on this. I'll put a uh, I'm going to put an AC voltage on here with my uh, generator here that I've got running. Okay, so we've got a 5 volts AC on there. So if I hold this in, no, it just beeps. It doesn't roll anything out. Um, but if I just do it once, then it, it's in a hold position. But uh, that the rel doesn't seem to do anything. It's silk screened on there, but it um, it doesn't seem to do anything. Okay, so I guess that's a that's nothing. I guess um, <laughs> for whatever reason, um, it's it's on there. But like I say, it's not mentioned at all in the manual. And I don't know if the uh, if the victors are like this or not, or if it's just this particular one. But uh, all in all, I'd say it's a uh, an okay meter for your glove box or something like that. Um, something you probably wouldn't use all the time, although it's nice and small. And if you're, uh, you know, you're messing around with electronics or uh, um, maybe uh, uh, some Arduinos or something like that, and you're you're going to go to a uh, uh, to a friend's house or maybe a group of you are getting together to do some experimenting, and you won't want to lug around a big giant multimeter. This would be a, a nice uh, a nice one to uh, to take with you if you didn't want to lug a um, full-size multimeter with you. Um, the probes, they're really obviously small because it's a pocket meter and the, the wires are fairly thin. Um, it's flexible and the, it's got like a flexible end to it so that's kind of nice that that works that way. Obviously you're stuck with these probes because they're, they're soldered onto the uh, unit itself um, but that's just kind of the way pocket meters are. Um, usually they don't have um, interchangeable probes because then the probes become bigger and longer and harder to uh, make portable like this one is. Um, it's not too terrible as far as um, getting it back in to the, uh, into the box. You just kind of have to coil it you know, back and forth a few times, three or four times, whatever it is. And then just um, get the probes in there and just kind of tuck them in there. Hmm. Well, I guess I need a little bit more practice, but I did get them back in there. So there it's back in there, and you just flip it, close it, and you're off wherever you want to go. So. All in all, I'd say if you're looking for one of these, they come under different brand names, like I say, on either eBay or uh, Amazon. Um, yeah, mine was $14. I've seen them as low as $10 or $11. Um, I'd say if you're looking for a cheap, inexpensive multimeter to uh, throw in the car or take with you somewhere, and, uh, you know, if you uh, run it over or get lost, uh, you're, you're not too uh, bent out of shape, I'd say it's a, it's a pretty decent uh, meter for, for what it is and what it costs. So, until next time, this is the Radio Geek.